Play the heist in the current strategy. What am I doing and why am I doing it? There's a few whales in the game, NFT Doctor is one of them, and he's got a pretty cool season two strategy. Now whales are different to us mere mortals, so this is not gonna to apply to everybody. Essentially in the first season, and I did cover this, he spent 1.1 thousand soul and he bought 55 chimps, upgraded them to the max the first day. He was able to stack Nana and grow it to 150 chimps and gorillas over that time by using recruitment. Then he sold some and he left with 4,000 soul profit. And his season two approach is quite similar. So he participated in the first recruitment, won 39 orangutans, swiftly sold them, bought lots of cocoa and maxed out all of his chimps. And I don't know how many orangutans he has now. He does suggest to max it out right up to tier four. His reasoning is smart. The earlier you get in, the better you have long term. As everyone else gets in their upgrades, it becomes harder and harder to get good yields because the amount of cocoa stolen per hour is always the same. In fact, it's less as more orangutans enter the game. It's divided among more NFTs and also because of combat. So let's go over that now. Firstly, whales do things a little bit differently. They can afford to have a little bit more risk. Later nerd plays in places where you can be wrecked where there is a chance that you can have your NFT burnt. I don't play here and a lot of smaller players won't. Federal Reserve and Goldman Racks, these give the highest chance of massive returns, like a 10X or a 20X. So your other two options are the safe house, which I normally play in overnight, and the currency exchange, where I'm currently playing in. Let's have a quick look at my NFTs and see how well they are upgraded. I've maxed everything to tier three. This is because going to tier four is quite a bit more expensive. On another address, I've gone to tier four and it has not hit anything special ever. In fact, it's fumbled pretty much always, despite being maxed out. But of course, that's just unlucky. Now the reasoning from NFT Doc is, if I upgrade this completely, then this one chimp should behave like about two to three normal chimps. Yet it only costs about 10 soul extra. Let me just check how much cocoa I've got. I've got 56,000. And let's have a look and see what it costs to upgrade. Okay, so I can't even afford to upgrade it. This here is about 50,000 plus another 80,000, 40 and 40. So it's about 130,000 just to add this last tier. If we go to Jupiter, we know that it costs around 340,000 cocoa to upgrade from zero to hero. So about $216, about 10.4 soul. If you've got plenty of money to play with, you might want to go to tier four across everything. However, my preference is to get everything up to level three, tier three, tier three across the board. That's when we start to get little extra boosts. 10% here, 5% here, three, five, as an example. These extra boosts, they don't come before tier three. So they're not present in tier two. If you're starting out smaller, maybe you can put another five soul and bring everything up as much as you can. Exactly what's gonna work best, I can't really say. My current strategy is to go with combat. Upgrade the combat first and the stealth. They are more affordable than luck and yield. And then go with yield and luck. Let's have a look at the orangutans. We've got the same situation here. This one needs to be upgraded. Let's see what it costs to go from tier one to tier two with combat and stealth. Okay, so we're about 30,000 cocoa to get there. We'll do this one and we'll do this one. And then these ones are gonna be quite a bit more. So I can't afford to do these both, but I think I can afford to do one of them. So I'll go with luck. Then when I've got more cocoa, I'll upgrade this one. What about items and getting scrap? Well, I don't jump to the scrapyard at all. The return on investment, in my opinion, is very low. You've got the scrapyard, the warehouse, and the mall. Getting one bit of scrap is worth 200 cocoa if you do a trade. Instead of going for cocoa, you can always just buy it. In fact, look, this person's selling it for 190. However, as a smaller player, I don't even like to buy things unless they're quite low. As an example, you can see I've got lower tier items. This is common and this is rare but most of the time I'm just using common items. They don't offer the same amount of kind of oomph, but they're far more affordable. And quite often, especially with my new strategy, they will be confiscated. So I wanna go for cheaper items. One thing that's a little bit harder is getting good items for your orangutans for cheap. So if we go to the black market, we of course can make these, but most of the time we're gonna get a common item. Up here, these colors here relate to the rarity. This is common. This is uncommon, this is rare, this is epic, and this is legendary. If I ever do craft something and it becomes this one or this one, I will just sell it and I'll buy cheaper things in these two categories. At the moment, I wanna get some kit bags. 
This would cost 3,000 cocoa plus 70 scrap. 70 scrap at 200 is 14,000 cocoa. It's too expensive. So instead I just come to chat. Want to buy two times kit bags common. And hopefully someone will see this and sell me something not too bad. While we're waiting for that to come through, let's go and have a look at currency exchange. And let's work out my next plan. I've had some people ask me, why wouldn't I just leave in my chimp or orangutan for the whole time, for five days or seven days? Well, it's simply because the event table gets worse over time. So let's compare these two as an example. Hover over this one, which has been on a heist for one day and eight hours. We can see there's a 1.7% chance it will be arrested. Confiscation, so losing the items is 6%. Ambushed or captured is 8.2. It's normally 10%, but because of my items, it's gone down. You can see the 10x chance is 2.6% and 5x is 3.9. Let's have a look at this one over here instead. And let's compare it side by side. 2.6, 3.9, same there. But now have a look at the bad things. This has almost a 4% chance of the items being confiscated and a 1% chance of being arrested compared to almost 6.3% and a 1.7% chance. Still 8.2, and this NFT is also 8.2. It's me, Mario's happy to sell a kit bag for 10K. I think that's a little bit pricey to be perfectly honest, so I'll wait for a better offer. What people will sometimes do though, is just send you an offer just in trades, but I've got nothing here. Now, another reason why it's good to upgrade combat is because you may see yourself ambushing or capturing more often. Unfortunately, I'm not getting very much action at all. Nothing in the last two days. And thus far, I've only been able to get Coco. I haven't got any items at all. Getting items is a lot rarer. By the way, remember to claim your ticket daily. Done. Let's go back to the currency exchange. Let's have a look at the orangutans. So we've got different statistics here. One day and eight hours, pretty much the same statistics as my chimp. So we have the same rate of confiscation versus 19 hours. And this one here doesn't have as high a stealth. So the confiscation rate is 4.1% versus 3.9. Let's quickly claim them and let's see how we did. Okay, so this is about as lucky as I've ever been. It's not a good representation of the game. I've got a 10X here, great. I've got a double here and this one hit expected twice. So that's, that's a winner. Let's go to the chimps. Let's have a look at them all side by side and remember that this one here with the headscarf, that one has been there for one day and eight hours. Okay, so we're arrested, fumbled, and we got expected. This is more often what's gonna happen, unfortunately. So that was not very good. That's why I normally do stop a heist after about four hours. However, I'm gonna bail everybody out and I'm gonna try something again. Now, because this one was arrested, it doesn't have a briefcase and it doesn't have a weapon. Let's see if we can get anything cheap. So I wanna buy a briefcase and an AK-47 common, cheap. See if we have any trade requests, nothing. I'll see if I can get from OTC Shecky a good trade. You should be able to get a briefcase for about 1500. So let's see if they're gonna accept anything like this for two different briefcases. Just remember to ping them a message. I've got Helix here offering something. I'll go with 1600, see if they will accept and check the other trade status, still pending. Want to buy AK-47, see if we get any luck this time. So I'm buying this gun for 2K, see how we go, it's 11. Can't really remember if it's a good price, but we'll find out and we'll check our other trades here. We're good to go, accepted, good. And we'll have a look and see if OTC Shecky, no. We'll unready and we'll just close that. Come back to this trade and just confirm. That's all we're gonna get for now, but that's fine. Now we'll go back to our hub and sometimes these will not show, in which case we just have to reload the website, click on our NFT, AK-47 and the briefcase. Now we're good to go. Okay, so to the currency exchange. Okay, so what our strategy is gonna be is leaving everything here for about five days and then we'll film it and we'll see how we go. Five days later, fingers crossed, we do well. Just to make it super clear why I only go for common or uncommon items, it's because in season one, I quite often 
equip things and then 10 hours later or less, they were confiscated and lost. So I don't want to spend 10,000 or more cocoa for something which may be confiscated pretty damn quickly. One of the other benefits of jumping on a heist is you can of course ambush or capture another ship. Another good thing potentially about being on a heist for longer is there's less chance potentially of being ambushed or captured regularly. Because if you're doing this every four hours, then you may have like a 10 or 8% chance of being ambushed or captured every four hours. Whereas if I'm doing this for five days, we'll see in five days what the chance of being ambushed or captured is. But it's gonna be nowhere too high, so we should be okay. Of course, the chance that we're arrested or confiscated is gonna be high, but we'll see if we strike gold. And as a final reminder, just remember, you can always enter the recruitment. Here's 10 contracts, we'll see how we go. The big dogs, they tend to put in a huge amount though. If we click on previous results, this was a thousand tickets. So that was pretty insane. And they only got eight NFTs. Reavers did not do well, 1200 and only got seven. I would say that would be under the cost basis. And no one else did anything really big. Although once again, look at Azure X, 525 tickets and only got two. That was terrible luck. Let me know your strategy in the comments and we'll catch you in five days.